What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to talk about Ike Williams and Bob Montgomery. You see, August 4th, 1947, Philadelphia's Municipal Stadium treated a crowd to one of the greatest lightweight championship matches in boxing history. And I want to discuss that fight right here with you on the Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov Series. What a fight. What a night. Now Isaiah Williams, better known as Ike Williams, was born August 2nd, 1923 in Bushwick, Georgia. He died September 5th, 1994. He was 71 years of age at the time of his death. He resided in Los Angeles, California. He stood 5 foot 9 inches and he had a 68 inch reach. He was an orthodox master boxer with power in either hand. Nike Williams had total fights. 154 bouts, 125 wins, 60 knockouts, 24 losses, and 5 draws. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1995. Ike Williams was a lightweight champion from Trenton, New Jersey, originally Boswick, Georgia. And unfortunately, he was found dead in his apartment. The police detective Kelly Cooper stated that the former lightweight champion, Isaiah Williams, apparently died of natural causes. Now, Ike was 71 years of age at the time of his death. I had the pleasure of meeting Ike Williams more than 10 occasions. And I got to tell you, Ike Williams was... He was a humanitarian, but he was a hell of a fighter. And many conversations that Ike Williams and I had was not only about his life and his career, but he told me about boxing in general. He told me about mankind. He told me about the lifestyles, the nightlife, the mob scenes. You see, I gathered a great deal of information from Ike Williams. They opened up a gym. Ike Williams' gym in New Jersey. He was that popular. But Bob Montgomery and Ike Williams share a common opponent. His name is Bojack Sidney Walker. And between these three men, they would offer the world the greatest fights the lightweights can ever possess. Nike Williams turned professional in 1940, along with future greats such as Jimmy Bivens, Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta, as well as Ezard Charles, among many. But here's ironic. Something that's stuck in my head for a long time. Here you have some great fighters that turned professional in 1940. And all but Jimmy Bivens lost their crown in 1951. You see, Ike Williams would lose his lightweight championship belt to Jimmy Carter in 1951. Williams would be knocked out in the eighth round. Sugar Ray Robinson lost his middleweight championship belt in 1951 to England's Randy Turpin. Ray Robinson would eventually get his belt back in 1951 at the Polo Grounds. Beautiful combinations against the ropes over Randy Turpin in 1951. Jake LaMotta would lose his middleweight championship strap in a St. Valentine's Day Massacre. 13 rounds against the ropes against Sugar Ray Robinson in 1951. Izzard Charles was knocked out with a bodacious left hook of Jersey Joe Walcott in 1951. So all these men, besides Jimmy Bivens, who turned pro in 1940, lost their titles in 1951. Phenomenal. Nike Williams worked as a newsboy after his family moved to Trenton, 
We had several street fights on a corner where he was hustling for his newspaper route. Just to give you a slight background on Mike Williams. He defeated the one-time lightweight champion, Sammy Angot. Now, Sammy Angot was an NBA lightweight champion when he defeated Luther Slugger White. And in 1942, Sammy Angot was scheduled to face Lenny Boom Boom Mancini in defense of his lightweight crown. But he never got that opportunity because of the war. Now, when he fought Ike Williams, Ike Williams would defeat Sammy Angot. But it was a non-title fight. And Ike Williams would be drafted into the war. So for the NBA, in a very close lightweight victory, non-title, September 6, 1944. Now, July 21st, 1949, Ike Williams would face an outstanding Mexican fighter by the name of Enrique Bolanos. Now, I got to tell you, the nephew of Enrique Bolanos, Robert Bolanos, is a stand-up individual. I have so much respect for him. But according to Robert Bolanos, he stated that his uncle Enrique made it very clear that Ike Williams is the hardest puncher that he has ever faced. You see, Enrique Bolanos faced Ike Williams three separate occasions. Enrique Bolanos had a fighting career record, 79 wins, 22 losses, 5 draws. He was born August 24th, 1924. He stood 5 foot and a half inches. He had a 72 inch reach. And he fought the original golden boy, Art Aragon, and Chico Vijar, just to name a few. But Enrique Bolanos was an outstanding fighter. I have him in my top 20 greatest Mexican fighters of all times. He's a phenomenal fighter, Enrique Bolanos. Salute to him. And salute to his nephew, Robert Bolanos. Nike Williams would defeat Mexicans Juan Zarita before a stunning crowd of 35,000 roaring fight fans, as well as Williams. He killed Juan Zarita. Fought him in Mexico City. And I got to tell you, that was some fight. Because Ike Williams KO'd Juan Zarita in two rounds. Hit him twice on top of the head. And the referee had no choice but to call it to a halt. You see, it was originally supposed to fight in Philadelphia. But it was canceled by the Philadelphia Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, actually it was the Boxing Commission, because they stated that Bob Montgomery was considered the champion. Now, Bob Montgomery was known as the Bobcat. He was born February 10th, 1919. That would be the year that Jack Dempsey would destroy a fighter by the name of Jess Willard and four brutal rounds. And Bob Montgomery was some fighter. He was born in Sumter, South Carolina. And he was introduced to the Boxing Hall of Fame as well. He died August 25th, 1998. He was 79 years of age at the time of his death. He resided in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I have met Bob Montgomery several times as well. He himself told me several stories. I learned a great deal of what I know from Bob Montgomery as well. Salute to Bob Montgomery. He stood five foot seven and a half inches and had a 70 inch reach. He was a two fisted orthodox boxer who ran from no one. Bob Montgomery was known as the Bobcat. And he moved to Philadelphia in 1934. He became a puller where he would separate laundry, tons of laundry, and he would distribute them, the colored and the fabrics into different large machines. Now Montgomery started training at the Slaughterhouse Gym on A Street and Gerard Avenue. Bob went undefeated in his first 23 fights 
with a record of 22-0. He won a Pennsylvania State Lightweight Championship for Mike Evans. Fought him October 24, 1939 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Bob lost a 10-round unanimous decision to former lightweight champion Lou Jenkins. And Lou Jenkins would take the lightweight championship crown from Lou Ambers. Lou Ambers took the title away from Henry Armstrong, who took the title away from him. A long history in that lightweight division. But on August, September 16, 1940, before a crowd of 12,900 fight fans at the Stripe Park in Philadelphia, the Bobcat was down for the count of nine. Bob defeated Julian Colin three times January 20th, 1941 at the Broadway Arena located in Brooklyn, New York. June 21st, 1947, Chicago Stadium, as well as October 24th, 1941. Now, Bob lost to former lightweight champion Sammy Angott by a 10-round split decision at the Shire Park, July 7th, 1942. In 1942, he also faced Maxi Shapiro. He would win one and lose one. Maxi Shapiro was an outstanding Jewish fighter, fought seven world champions in his career. He was trained by an old friend of mine by the name of Teddy. Maxi Shapiro himself was some fighter. On May 21st, 1943, the great Bo Jack lost a 15-round decision. Bo Jack banged Bob Montgomery with constant pressure, bolo punches, non-stop attack. One of the greatest lightweight championship bouts of all times. You see, my dad told me about that fight because he was there. And he told me that it was a standing room. Because the majority of the crowd was standing the entire time. He never witnessed a greater fight than a fight between Bo Jack and Bob Montgomery. Now these fellas would face each other several times. They would switch belts back and forth. And Bo Jack would face Bob Montgomery when they were in the military. They would each get a dollar and donate their entire purse to the Army and, and, and uh, I assume the Navy Relief Fund. And it was one of the greatest lightweight championship bouts of all times. Now in this particular fight, Bojack had cuts over his eyes. His eyes was basically shut. Montgomery had cuts over his eyes as well. Bojack took a right to the chin and was dropped to his knees in the 11th round. Now, Bob Montgomery would beat Petey Scalzo in a six-round TKO, October 25th, 1943, Philadelphia Convention Hall. Scalzo was dropped three times. It was for the New York SAC World Lightweight Championship. And you see, Bob Montgomery would also face Ali Stokes. Now, he was an outstanding fighter. Fought him before a fighting crowd of 10,872. But that fight took place in Madison Square Garden. It was a stunning event. August 4th, 1947. Bob Montgomery was TKO'd by the great Ike Williams and six boot rounds for the World Lightweight Championship at the Philadelphia Municipal Stadium. The fight was stopped in his hometown by the referee in six rounds. Ike Williams, one of the greatest lightweight champions of all times. I did a video earlier today. Ike Williams was in that video and I had explained about a well-dressed man Ike Williams was. He took his dressing seriously. He used to shop at Four Shine and Stacy Adams Shoes. And he would have shiny shoes and a top hat and an overcoat and a three-piece suit and a pocket watch, handkerchief. Everything he needed to what they call sporting life. 
And you can find Ike Williams at most all nightclubs. And he was the man in Trenton. Bob Montgomery was a little different. He wasn't out as much. He concentrated on training. He was a family man. But these two would get it on August 4th, 1947. And they would both fight Bojack. And between those three men, they would provide the world with the greatest lightweight championship bouts of all times. Salute to Ike Williams and Bob Montgomery. Thanks for listening. This is Scrapbook Boxing. Stated that all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. When you want to talk about great fights, don't leave out Ike Williams and Bob Montgomery. Oh, and by the way, we cannot forget Bojack as well. Salute to my subscribers. Salute to these great fighters. Until next time, you've learned about this fight right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fistico Series. <laughs>